Hey, Comp Train, Coach's Corner. Let's go macro, micro, then mixed bag. So macro, this is week 14 of Racehorse, and it's our last week. Deload week next week, and then we're into the open. So micro, we have four benchmarks we're retesting this week. Monday, snatch. Tuesday, burpee cycling. Wednesday is barbell cycling and heavy lift, heavy complex. And then Friday is a handstand walk. Now, at the end of every cycle, we retest benchmarks. And of course, we want to see some improved scores. But the interesting part about these benchmarks is it's a bigger focus than just PR. The primary reason we're putting this in there is because awareness is key. And by doing these benchmarks right before the open or before a competition, we have that awareness of ourselves. When we look at a competition, you need to have good strategy, but it's not just an overarching blanket strategy. It's a strategy specific to you. So when an event comes up that shares resemblances, we know of a recent touch point to help us war game that even better. So that's our down low on the benchmarks coming up. Turn over to Jared, mixed bag. Hey, Comp Train. Uh, this week, uh, we want to talk about pacing through workouts, specifically using rate of perceived exertion or your RPE. We're going to use this uh, because it's a really good way to illustrate and show how we should be pacing workouts. And it's also something that allows you as an athlete to know how to understand yourself better, how you feel when you come into the gym. Also knowing that your rate of perceived exertion can change depending how you feel walking in the gym every single day. So this is a good way to know how to pace workouts and how to approach them, especially when it comes to competitions, the open, things like that when we're going through training. So let's, when we're talking about your rate of perceived exertion, um, we also want to think about your maximum sustainable pace. That's something that we use a lot when we're talking about threshold workouts, or, or going through workouts. What is the maximum sustainable pace that we can hold without having to stop or slow down our workout? And that's gonna be different for everybody. And ideally, the more we train, we're gonna increase that, that number. So we're gonna draw a graph here. This graph is gonna show our rate of perceived exertion and our time. The first example we're gonna use is our intervals. So if we're doing an interval workout, this is typically what we want this, this graph to look like. So we have our rate of perceived exertion with our, a 10 would be our red line. So this dark line here is gonna be our red line. And then below that is gonna be uh, what our maximum sustainable pace would be in a normal workout. And that's gonna be what the dotted lines are gonna represent here. So the proper way to approach our interval workouts where we have some work followed by some prescribed rest is we go up above that red line then we slowly recover and we come down. Then we go back up and then back down, and then back up and then back down, and then we finish that workout above that red line. Each time our recovery stays a little bit closer to that red line, but we're still able to recover to ramp back up. What we see from amateur athletes most of the time is something more along the lines of this, where we go above that red line, we barely get below that red line as we go to recover, we go back above that red line too high, and then before you know it, we're staying at that red line even during our recovery, we're not able to recover when we get back to that next round. These interval workouts are really important because when we get these micro doses above that red line in these intervals each time, this is how we increase that threshold, our ability to press harder, our ability to raise that, that red line so that our 10, so that my 10 of a rate of perceived exertion is higher than my buddy's 10. So that way I can hold a little bit longer and then that will in turn raise our, my, uh, my maximum sustainable pace. Let's use these same, the same charts um, when talking about our threshold workouts. When you think of a, a Helen uh, workout like that, we're in that eight to 12 minute range where we wanna hold that maximum sustainable pace as long as we can. The way we wanna approach these workouts is at three, two, one, go, we wanna go out of the gates a little hot. We wanna go just above that red line, just above that 10 on our rate of perceived exertion and just get a taste of that intensity. What that micro dose of intensity is gonna do, it's gonna allow us when we gently come back down out of that to settle in at our maximum sustainable pace. So that little dose makes our maximum sustainable pace feel not as difficult because we've already dipped our toe in the waters of that really intense pacing. So that allows us to gently come down 
hold that sustainable pace. And if we do it properly, then that last round, we can ramp it back up to finish. So then on these threshold workouts, our first round and our last round should be our two fastest rounds with that middle being a really nice, strong pacing as we go along. That's what we want. What we don't want to see and what we'll see from, from new competitors and amateur athletes is we go up and we get that micro dose of that, that taste above threshold, above that red line, but we stay there. Those athletes will just stay there a little too long. And what ends up happening is when we come back down to try and hold that maximum sustainable pace, we go right through the floor and go past that and we can never quite recover to finish that workout. That's why you'll see an experienced athlete working out to a le out next to a less experienced athlete and as the workout goes on, that experienced athlete catches them, holds and just pulls away when the less experienced athlete will kind of crash and burn at the end. So quick recap for everybody, let's get to know ourselves and how we can pace these things out. If we approach the workouts well and we know what our rate of perceived exertion is, and like I said, for the sake of this talk, we'll say it's an eight out of 10 is our maximum sustainable pace. And now that's gonna change relative to the length of the workout. So if we're at an eight minute workout, maybe my maximum sustainable pace is a nine out of 10, but if it's a 20 minute workout, maybe my maximum sustainable pace is a seven out of 10 on that RPE. So we really just gotta get to know ourselves, understand the workout, then use our strategies for how we approach a workout that we've discussed before. We put all of that together. We know how to strategize a workout. We know how to pace a workout. And all that does is allow us to perform at our max uh, potential for each one of these workouts. Hope that worked out well for you guys. We'll see you next week.